Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft video and today is the next episode in the series of creating a Minecraft seasonal event boss. Of course in our last two episodes we learned all about setting up the arena for the pumpkin, teleporting the player in, setting them into adventure mode, of course setting up the health bar, actually spawning the pumpkin itself, and then also how to give the pumpkin uh, various movesets and cool custom abilities just using vanilla Minecraft command blocks. Uh, so today, what we're actually going to do is talk about a brand new type of phase uh, that we can give to our boss um, and wrap up some of his other abilities that we can give him. So coming back into our command room here, uh, we have all of these command blocks and phases that we talked about last time. And something that I wanted to mention and I forgot in the other videos is make sure uh, if you want to reset your timers, we have these little uh, repeating command blocks over here. So to reset uh, the poison cooldown, for example, um, we can execute this as the pumpkin. If the poison uh, cooldown or pumpkin attack two matches more than 700, we can set it back to zero. These can be contingencies or it can just be set up for yourself. The problem is they are repeating command blocks, so they will try and trigger every tick. Um, but this is basically saying, look, if for some reason these don't trigger at the end um, and the cooldowns of them are not getting reset, you can have custom resets on them. So if any of the scores of any of the abilities ever reach a certain threshold, you can just reset them back to zero in the fight uh, and it will start counting up again. These are useful to have, uh, especially if you have a laggy server, sometimes ticks get skipped um, or certain things don't happen, so it's nice to have backup uh, resets. But enough about that. Where we are next, is a very quick uh, other ability that I gave to the Pumpkin is the Phantom Paralyze. Uh, similar to the first couple abilities, this is one that happens when he reaches a certain health threshold or 175 or lower. So once again, executing it as the Pumpkin, uh, if his health score is less than 175 or equal to, unless there is red sand covering the block, uh, and we will add another new scoreboard and add one to it of Pumpkin Attack 5. This time we're going to play a uh, particle effect around the pumpkin to let the players know that he's about to cast a spell uh, for approximately two seconds here, um, as long as the timer matches between 200 and 240. Uh, I used a cool energetic poisy bubble from the energetic expansion mod, but you can use any particle that you like. Enchant crit is another good one. And once again, we have it at the local coordinates, the delta of 111, uh, a speed of 0 0.01 and 30 particles. So they will play around the pumpkin as long as he's casting the spell between that time frame. Then, once he's finished uh, casting, we actually are going to... Uh, so this is 240 once the timer reaches that. We are going to give all players within an 8 block distance uh, paralysis. Um, again, you can give it any uh, potion effect you want to give them, but I chose for paralysis. So what this does is players can actually see the pumpkin casting the ability, but... Because the radius is actually pretty short, they can get away from it if they are quick enough, which is, you know, something that we want them to be able to do. We don't want it to be unfair. So they will be paralyzed uh, for approximately four seconds and blinded for approximately four seconds as well at exactly the same time. Um, and what we are going to do is actually summon a phantom at the same time as well, directly on the pumpkin, so it can capitalize on the player being paralyzed. This is a pretty brutal attack, uh, but if you have a bunch of players fighting the boss at once, this isn't actually too bad as a couple of people can dispatch the phantom rather quickly. Once again, we have another tell rock command going in here at the same time at 240. Um, we are just going to tell the players that he is casting or he has cast another spell. And then finally, we are resetting the attack once it reaches 500, unconditional, so it's always going on. Um, and once it reaches 500 ticks, we will reset it back to zero. Pretty self-contained attack, I just wanted to talk about that one before we moved on to the cool stuff. Speaking of which, this is it, the final phase. So, once the pumpkin reaches 50 health or less, he will enter his final phase. Now the reason I did 50 health and not something like 10 health or 1 health is because sometimes players have rather overpowered swords, especially on this server, uh, with damage that can rack up anywhere to 25 plus. Um, so I wanted to try and capture that uh, within a 50 health margin. So what ends up happening is as soon as the boss reaches 50 health, final scoreboard or pump final phase uh, will turn on. So we are executing it as the pumpkin. If the uh, pumpkin health matches less than 50 or equal to 50, we will set, uh, unless we already have the uh, final phase going, we will set the final phase score to one. 
So once again, this just means it will only ever happen once. Um, then what we're gonna do is, as the Pump King, uh, if the score of the timer um, matches anywhere between zero and five ticks, so this will be six ticks total, we're going to teleport the Pump King to a specific set of blocks. Once again, if you have a laggy server, uh, having a range is usually pretty good, so it will teleport the Pump King for the full six ticks up to that uh, bunker that we made last time out of barriers. Once he's up there, uh, we will give the players another Telra, letting them know that he is in his final phase. Um, once again, executing at the Pumpkin. Uh, if his Pumpkin attack 6 score or timer matches 0, so right off the bat, uh, we will have it uh, say that Telra. Then, what we're going to want to do is actually talk about where the red sand comes into play. Now, I know we haven't talked about it too much yet, but when the Pumpkin enters the final phase, we don't want him doing all of his other abilities, like spawning Silverfish, um, or teleporting the players around, or activating poison clouds at his feet, because he'll be stuck up in the box. So what we can do to mitigate that is actually replace uh, these empty tiles above the command blocks with red sand. So that's what this command right here does. We're going to execute it uh, at the pumpkin. Um, if the thing matches zero, if the timer matches zero, we will run and fill these blocks right here with red sand, which is these three blocks. Um, and if you remember, their only contingency in the beginning here is uh, we are going to run this command unless the block right above it is equal to red sand. So basically this is just a stopping tactic if you don't want these to trigger for whatever reason. I just use red sand because I think it, it stands out uh, quite nicely. You can use any block. Um, so here we have these will no longer function as long as there is red sand above them, meaning none of these chains will function. So. That is the first thing that happens in the 50 health phase after the Telra. We put the red sand in all of the things that we don't want to happen anymore, um, uh, including the phantom attack. There's also one right here that just puts one right there. Uh, and then we also, uh, to set up our arena, if you remember, we actually have a couple of big pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns that are these right here. Well. Our final phase is actually going to be a bullet hell, uh, where the pumpkin spawns a bunch of rapidly moving uh, blocks that the player is going to have to dodge. The problem is these uh, pumpkins can actually make for good walls and kind of disrupt our pumpkin's attacks. So what we're going to do is teleport them a couple blocks higher. Now I'm going to talk about arena setup um, probably in the next and final episode, uh, but just to give you guys a quick idea of what you can do if you want your arena to shift around mid-combat, uh, you can use the clone command. So here we are actually uh, cloning some other blocks. As you can see right here, uh, I have the uh, big pumpkin right here, uh, just in this little underground area. So we are actually going to clone those coordinates right there. Um, and we are going to use the move function of the clone command. So it's actually going to clone that pumpkin and move it higher up, or clone the pumpkins that are in the arena and move them higher up. So what that does, it'll leave some air and get our pumpkins off the ground for our bullet hell. So we do that on both pumpkins around the arena. And then finally, we set our final phase set to one. So we know that this will only run through once and it will not need to happen again. So now that we have the final phase prepped, what is it actually going to look like? That is honestly what the rest of these command blocks are for. Um, as this gets a little complicated. And this is really only if you want to do advanced commands that will 100% lag your server, but will also 100% impress your players. So right off the bat, we want to make a bullet hell in Minecraft. Well, how do you do that? First, I thought about using fireballs, uh, because fireballs you can summon, uh, you can give them a little bit of a direction, and they can kind of fly all over the place. The problem is their velocity ends, they can be interrupted with arrows, um, they cause explosions, which isn't really something I wanted, and in the end, they can be a little bit unpredictable, especially if they collide with each other by accident. So I figured they were a little bit too temperamental. I thought about using arrows or other projectiles, but what it ended up coming down to uh, was actually using uh, a function that exists in Minecraft to move blocks around like sand. So I figured the best thing that I could do right now is just show you how it works at first, and then actually go through what the command blocks look like. So in our bullet hell scenario here, in the final phase, we have the pumpkin teleport up, and you see these particle effects kind of come on the screen, these portal particle effects. And if you watch closely, 
is a whole row of pumpkins that slam from side to side on the actual uh, arena. Uh, the pumpkin stays up in there the entire time, um, while the player kind of runs around, not really sure what to do, as more of these particle effects begin to play out. Once again, the pumpkin is invincible. He actually summons some phantoms to mess with the players as well, uh, which can be quite annoying. So these pumpkins kind of go back and forth in three different waves, but between each bullet hell wave, we actually do have a way to hurt the pumpkin. These pumpkin totems spawn, uh, which are just skeletons with pumpkin heads, um, firing particles at the pumpkin, which actually do give him a small amount of regeneration, uh, which increases his health. Uh, now you'll notice we have a different phase here, where the particles kind of get more intense, and the pumpkins fly across the stage um, in two different directions now. And then once again, the pumpkin totems spawn and gives players another chance to attack them. Once all four of the pumpkin totems are defeated, uh, the pumpkin himself will actually come down and fight the player back in the arena. But uh, they have a little bit of health, so it takes a little bit for the player to kill them. And then in the final phase, you can see the pumpkin is coming one at a time here. Just like so, at variable intervals, and then it actually gets quicker on the final one as the pumpkins go up the length of the arena. And when all four pumpkin totems are defeated, the pumpkin will come back down, allowing the player to finally finish him off once and for all. Let's actually see what this looks like, uh, the different phases of the pumpkin bullet hell and the pumpkin totems and the damage of the pumpkins and all of that. So, now that we're back with our command blocks, let's take a look at what we're actually doing. Uh, so at the beginning, the very first thing we want to do is when he reaches his final phase, we are going to display those particles which allow the players to see where the uh, pumpkin blocks are coming from. So you see here we have the reverse particle effect, uh, which starts playing if the pumpkin attack 6 timer matches anywhere between 100 and 160. And I should mention very quickly that uh, this one is actually separate than all of the other uh, attacks. You'll notice all the other attacks start with their timers going up by 1. But that one actually happens here. Um, as long as the pumpkin is in the final phase, so as long as that score matches one, we're going to add one to the timer. The reason because of this is we have so many things that work off of this timer, it's easier just to have it as a manager back here rather than at the beginning of each one of these uh, attacks. So if we have it back here, that'll just keep increasing as long as the pumpkin's in his final phase every single tick. Um, then, of course, we also have a uh, reset function as well, which will reset it. Uh, which I'll get into in a little bit. And similarly, it summons the phantoms whenever it is between two and six, and that's why you have those phantoms that spawn. As for the bullet hell though, um, once we start displaying particles, so you can see the first ones are between 100 and 160 ticks, or uh, five to eight seconds. Uh, then we have uh, another couple um, right here. Uh, basically, this just spawns all of the particles at once, showing the player exactly at what time the uh, particles will be displayed. And then the meat of this entire operation is the fancy, let me get to it, we're gonna execute it as the pumpkin. Um, if the score matches 160 to 162, uh, we are summoning a falling block. Now in Minecraft, a falling block is usually something like sand or gravel, something that is affected by gravity. However, if you summon a falling block, you can actually give it any block texture in the game um, to make it look like whatever you want. In our example, we use pumpkins. So as soon as the uh, tick reaches 160, so you have that um, couple seconds of particles, then we actually spawn three pumpkins as it's inclusive 160 to 162. We summon them at the location that we want them to. Uh, the first example is all the way to the left of the arena. Uh, and then again on MC Stacker, you can go and you can edit the uh, falling blocks yourself. So here we have them as pumpkins, they have no gravity, uh, they have a 500 lifetime, they don't drop, um, but they do hurt entities. Uh, and the rest is just up to you, and the motion is, is what direction you would like them to actually fly in, which is also very important. Um, so we spawn each of these uh, according to where the particles were, so these coordinates are basically the same as uh, these coordinates just a little bit left on the x-axis. So we spawn all the particles, um, which again in our case is the reverse particle particle effect, reverse portal particle, uh, and then the falling blocks follow suit uh, after the, the time is up, and they will fly in whatever motion we give them. 
Now, by default, I actually couldn't figure out a way to make them hurt the player going sideways. Usually, they only hurt a player falling on them, like sand or gravel. So I came up with a solution. So this command block over here in our arena uh, setting basically says we're executing at the type of falling block within a distance of 50. So all falling blocks within 50 uh, units of this command block. Um, if a random player is within two blocks of that falling block, we are going to give that player uh, instant damage. What this does is any falling blocks that are falling sideways within a 50 block radius will hurt any player within two blocks of them. Basically, this allows us to create damage when blocks fall sideways, which I thought was a pretty uh, unique way of doing it. So when the pumpkins fly from here over there, if a player is uh, unlucky enough to be close enough to them, they will take damage. Now, of course, that command block does happen every tick. So, for example, if you had a pumpkin that was moving very slowly uh, across the, the field like this, um, and the player just kind of stood still, and the pumpkin was right on top of the player, they would die pretty quickly. Um, it, it wouldn't take too long, because if that instant damage is happening every tick, uh, it would do too much damage and kill them. However, because our pumpkins actually travel relatively quickly across the battlefield and the player is always moving, there's a very low chance that the player is actually going to stop and get stuck with a pumpkin uh, damaging them too quickly. That is the basis for the entire rest of the phase. Uh, so once you have the horizontal go a couple seconds later, then we have the uh, vertical go, um, which we have right here with all the different particles. All of these are set to repeat. You'll notice this entire section is actually set to repeat. Um, because everything is so staggered, I thought it would be easier just making each one its own trigger rather than having something and then a string of somethings after it. So this basically says whenever the timer matches between these numbers, do something. Whenever the timer matches between these numbers, do something. Um, all the way up to the actual summoning of the pumpkins themselves. So you can use that cool uh, falling block command uh, to make your own bullet hell in Minecraft. And as long as you give them a direction at the end of the... Uh, block right here, 0x, zero, uh, 0y, zero but 1.5z direction, uh, they will travel in that direction until they hit something. So the only other thing we do in this phase is actually summon the uh, pumpkin totems, which are the little skeletons you saw that came up. Now I thought the best way of doing this uh, was actually give them each a symbol in their name so we could um, deal with them individually. So uh, as long as the pumpkin attack matches 400 to 402, this is our first totem phase, um, we are going to teleport the first pumpkin totem, the heart symbol one, to the correct coordinate, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, we teleport the diamond one to the correct coordinate, then we teleport the clover one to the correct coordinate, and finally the spade one to the correct coordinate. Um, so as soon as the pumpkin totem phase happens, which you can set it to be any time, for me it's 400 and 402, they teleport to where they're supposed to be. In addition to that, these command blocks in between them these set the cool uh, ender flame particles um, that I have shooting from the skeletons into the pumpkin, which is giving him regeneration. Uh, although, spoiler alert, it is just a visual effect. The regeneration has nothing to do with the actual particles. Um, but nonetheless, the particles fire into the uh, pumpkin from the direction of the uh, totem. Uh, this takes a little bit of finagling and a lot of uh, trial and error. So we're executing it as one of the pumpkin totems, at the pumpkin totem, and we are running the uh, particle, and I chose the ender flame particle. And then this is just all about the way you want it to go, uh, where you want it positioned, the delta, the speed, all of that. Um, so that's all going to take a little while for you to figure out. But uh, once you do figure it out, you'll get those cool purple line particles uh, going towards whatever boss you want it to go towards. So this is to teleport all of the uh, totems where they should be. Oh, I didn't mean to put the pumpkin down there. Um, and once they are all teleported, uh, we also have um, execute as the pumpkin at the pumpkin. If the score of the dummy matches 500, we're going to teleport all of the skeletons that we just summoned um, back to a specific coordinate. This stores them away for later. So you noticed when we were fighting the skeletons, after five or so seconds, they teleported away from the player. Now this is not unsummoning them, because if we did that, then we would have to resummon only the ones that the player hasn't killed. What I found was easier is just teleporting all the skeletons on the surface, which there shouldn't be any in the arena besides those ones, um, down into this little cage right here, uh, which is actually where we gave the um, pumpkin totems their attributes. 
So right here, uh, we actually have where they get summoned. As the pumpkin, if the pumpkin attack matches one, so as soon as the pumpkin enters his final phase, we're going to summon a skeleton, give him all the attributes we need, basically in MC Stacker, making them stand still, making them wear a pumpkin, um, and making them have a custom amount of health with a custom name as well. Um, and once they have all of that, they will all be summoned in a row. They'll teleport up when they need to be, and then they'll all teleport right back here um, to be summoned in the next totem phase. And that's pretty much it uh, for the totems. So after the totems teleport away, which is that last command block uh, over here, we then move into the next part of the phase. I did squeeze in the pumpkin regen right here. Uh, you could put it wherever you want, but this basically says, hey, um, we're executing it as the pumpkin, at the pumpkin, if the pumpkin final phase matches one, so if he's in his last phase, and there is one of the skeleton totems within 20 blocks of him, uh, he will basically uh, add to the regen score because strays can't actually get the regen potion effect. I tried just giving him the regen potion effect, but strays unfortunately cannot have that one applied to them. So instead we increase the score, a dummy score by one, and then whenever the dummy score reaches 60 or every three seconds, we can give the stray or the pumpkin uh, one instant damage because it's undead, this actually heals it. So every three seconds that there is a skeleton on the field, he will get uh, a little bit of health back, not very much. And you can adjust that to as much as you want it to. And then of course this resets the timer. So every three seconds, it'll just keep going and going as long as there's skeletons on the field. And that's pretty much it. You can then go through and keep checking the timer. So now we have as the pumpkin, if the timer matches 500 to 540, we will now summon more particles going in the directions that we want them to. Uh, and then once again, we will also summon uh, more pumpkins, which are actually over here. The reason I split it into two rows this time is because we actually staggered it. So this summons a whole bunch of uh, portal lines all over the arena. And then this one will summon all of the pumpkins at the same time. Similarly, you can see here, this is horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical, um, going and going and going. So this summons all the particles. Then as soon as the timer reaches this specified timer we want, in this case, you know, 560 to 600, um, or I think it's probably 600, uh, it will actually summon the falling block, uh, similar to the first ones that we wanted to. Now, the reason that I have it uh, three falling blocks from 600 to 602, uh, likewise across the board, is because I noticed that one falling block uh, doesn't look as cool, and especially on a laggy server, sometimes it will not damage a player if there's only one quick block that flies through them. If you have, say, three blocks that fly through them, that ensures that the player will take damage, uh, and it also looks like a cool little line of pumpkins that flies through the sky. But in a nutshell, this is how you can make a bullet hell. You set up a timer, uh, you set up when you want the particles to be displayed, and then after the particles are displayed, you just set the direction of a falling block with whatever texture you want on MC Stacker, going in a direction, make sure that falling blocks will hurt players around you, uh, and that's pretty much it. Then the totems come back at a different time interval, um, and then the player can attack them again, so on and so forth, up until the very end. Uh, so over here, we have the last stand for the pumpkin. Um, and this is where the final bit comes into play. Uh, so this, pretty much like the other um, half health phase, we say we're executing as the pumpkin if he's in his last phase, um, if the timer is two or higher, unless one of the totems is still alive. Um, basically, I said within 80 blocks, but that's with anywhere around the arena. Um, and as long as he hasn't done his final, final, final attack yet. Uh, then we teleport him back into the battlefield uh, because everyone has been killed. Um, and we give him some final last ditch effects. I increased his speed with an effect there. I gave him a final tell rod to the players. Um, and then we also fill in uh, something he was standing on with air. And finally set the final phase do final pump set to one. And that is it. Now he's been teleported back into the arena because all the skeletons are dead and the player can finally finish him off however they see fit. Um, and that is it for the pumpkin. So why don't I just show you what that looks like? So the pumpkin enters his final phase here. Uh, and of course, similar to before, he will spawn the phantoms. Uh, and now you can see that the particles will start to be shown in the coordinates that we gave it in the command block. And then of course, once those eight seconds go by and a little bit longer for any server lag, the pumpkins will fire across the screen. And if I was in survival mode right now, this would kill me as we have the command block 
saying that any falling block around the area will do a significant amount of damage. Um, however, as soon as the totem spawn, after he does his other uh, pumpkin attack here, I will quickly dispatch them and then show you what it looks like when he comes back onto the ground. There's one. And here's two. Here's the second phase, where it does a very similar thing. It spawns the pumpkins at one side, after the timer is specified, then shoots them in a direction until they hit something. Throws them once more. And the last pumpkin totem. As soon as he is defeated, the pumpkin is teleported back down into the arena, uh, where he yells, um, says it's time for us to rot, gets very mad. Uh, all of his abilities become unblocked once again, all of the red sand is gone. Um, and if I become unparalyzed now, I can come in here as a player. Now, it should be noted that I actually kept the bullet hell on in this phase. I didn't turn the pumpkin attack back to uh, zero and set it to be off, because I thought for a nice final phase feature, it would just keep uh, spawning pumpkins around the arena while you're still trying to fight him, which makes it very, very hard in a cool little last ditch effort. But sure enough, the pumpkin has met his match. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode, where we learned how to make a very interesting phase of bullet hell for your final boss, which spices up any boss fight, I would say so. Uh, it should be noted that, of course, this does uh, take a little bit of strain on anyone's server, um, but a very cool feat nonetheless, using particles and the falling block summon command. Uh, in our next and final episode, we will be talking about the drops of the pumpkin, cleaning anything up, and making a cool boss arena with different abilities. But as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if this video helped you out at all, and until next time, guys, see you!